The task force conditionally recommends using long-term non-invasive ventilation in patients with COPD who develop hypercapnic respiratory failure. We know that advanced COPD patients may develop hypoxemic and hypercapnic respiratory failure. And so far, long-term oxygen therapy is one of the main standard treatment options in hypoxemic patients. And now the task force aims to answer whether hypercapnic patients may uh, have some benefits from non-invasive ventilation because we know that hypercapnic COPD patients uh, have higher mortality. And according to the pooled analysis of the randomized control trials, uh, there's a slight decrease in mortality and exacerbation rate in these patients with non-invasive ventilation. Again, uh, we have some positive effects for dyspnea scores, exercise capacity, and health-related quality of life. Because of those reasons, we believe that non-invasive ventilation should be considered in patients uh, with hypercapnic respiratory failure. The task force conditionally recommends using the invasive ventilation just after an acute episode of hypercapnic respiratory failure. There are not too many data about this uh, issue, but we know that patients with hypercapnic respiratory failure uh, experience readmissions to the hospital, so uh, an intervention with non-invasive ventilation may have a positive effect on these patients' uh, readmission rates. So there are a limited number of studies uh, evaluating the timing of uh, initiation of non-invasive ventilation with inconsistent results, but we believe that uh, patients with high carbon dioxide levels in baseline and who are frequent exacerbators and uh, who have uh, chronic hypercapnia just two to four weeks after uh, acute episode uh, may benefit non-invasive ventilation in long term. There is no effect of non-invasive ventilation on mortality in these patients, but this intervention may decrease uh, readmission rates. The task force conditionally recommends titrating uh, settings of non-invasive ventilation according to maximal reduction in carbon dioxide levels. Uh, we know that hypercapnia is uh, a predictor of uh, worse outcomes, so correcting hypercapnia may be important in the uh, survival of these patients. Uh, recently, some studies show that high-intensity non-invasive ventilation, which targets maximal reduction in carbon dioxide levels, uh, may have beneficial effects both in physiological and clinical outcomes with no major side effects. So because of uh, these results, uh, the task force thinks that titrating non-invasive ventilation settings according to maximal reduction in carbon dioxide levels may be beneficial in these patients. So most of the literature data comes from pressure support mode. Uh, but recently, with the advances in technology, newer modes which combine volume targeted and pressure targeted uh, ventilation uh, may have some beneficial effects. We call them adaptive or auto-titrating modes. These uh, modes are very important for uh, changing needs of the patient, so they have some beneficial effects in the preliminary studies. But most of these studies are in short term, so for long-term use of non-invasive ventilation, we have to be uh, more confident about these results. For this reason, the task force recommends using pressure support modes uh, during long-term non-invasive ventilation. There are some patient-related and equipment-related factors for the effectiveness of COPD. The task force believes that age and comorbidities uh, does not have much effect uh, for the outcome of patients using non-invasive ventilation. 
uh, obesity is an important factor in these factors because patients with obesity, heart failure may have beneficial effects with long-term non-invasive ventilation. When we think about equipment-related factors, the interface is one of the key uh, factors for the effectiveness of COPD. The patient must feel uh, comfortable with the interface they are using. Also, some patients may experience mucosal dryness, so humidification may be another factor for increasing compliance of these patients.